and welcome to the virtual USJ Alumni Talk session. I'm Dania, I work at the American Center Tashkent, and as many uh, of you have noticed that we've been celebrating International Education Week this week. And today we're going to discuss education opportunities for students with disabilities. For that, we have invited an alumnus of the Hubert Humphrey and IVLP programs, Mirjahan Turdiev. Hello, Mirjahan, and thank you so much for joining us today. Good evening, Dania. Good evening, it's Dania. my pleasure, it's to, my be pleasure here. to be here. I know it's early morning uh, uh, where you are now. Thank you so much for uh, joining and uh, doing this for us today. Um, give, uh, let me introduce you to our audience. Uh, Mirjahan Turdiv is an emerging scholar from Uzbekistan researching the social justice issues of persons with disabilities at Syracuse University Social Science Department. In addition to his ongoing research activities, he actively engages in the public sector, running a blog on disability and development, providing consulting services to UN, OSCE, World Bank, and civil society organizations of persons with disabilities. And uh, today, uh, as Mirjahan uh, talk about education opportunities for students with disabilities, we want you, our um, viewers, our friends, ask your questions in the comments and our speaker will answer them at the end. Okay, let's get started. I'm giving the floor to you, Rajahan. Your presentation is on the screen. Uh, thank you very much for this much. very nice this introduction, very nice uh, introduction uh, Dania. Uh, Dania. It is my great it's pleasure, my pleasure uh, uh, to, be to be the guest of your guest uh, today's, of your, uh, today's uh, program. Program. Yes, uh, yes, this is uh, a education. I want celebration, and today's topic. I'm going to speak going about to speak the about uh, education uh, opportunities, education specifically opportunities, higher education, specifically education opportunities, opportunities for students for with students disabilities, disabilities in the United, in the United States. States. Uh, at first, hello. At first, uh, I wanted to briefly give an overview of education of students with disabilities uh, in the United States. My presentation will focus on the higher education, but before that, I wanted to give general overview that in the United States, uh, many universities, colleges, high schools have great uh, study opportunities for uh, different levels of uh, students with different disabilities starting from uh, high school, then going to the undergraduate programs, uh, graduate programs, and I have even have lots of friends who just recently defended their uh, PhDs uh, with their, you know, coming with different disability backgrounds. So I'm really pleased and I'm really honored being in this university, which is called Syracuse University. Uh, I've been here and doing my research and I have lots of friends and professors and I've been enjoying how this university providing equal opportunity for students with disabilities. So uh, with my slides, I will give you some specific examples, but before that, I just wanted to give you overall, uh, you know, to give you some orientation uh, where I am, where Syracuse University is, and just general, like give some contextual uh, information. Uh, so, Welcome to Syracuse University. As uh, Dania said, we are 10 hour difference with Uzbekistan. Uh, right now it's uh, five minutes past 7 a.m. here. Uh, and as you see here, our university uh, uh, located in the middle of uh, distance between New York City and uh, Canada. Uh, it's called upstate New York. It's a very snowy area. Uh, so it's, we have very beautiful campus. So on your screens, you see it's our uh, campus. I'm sitting uh, in one of these buildings, actually on the left corner. Uh, it's beautiful campus. So I love it. So why I'm giving you this view of the campus, just to get a sense how our university campus is located on the hills. So there's ups and downs, lots of hills and buildings. These buildings are built more than 100 years ago. Like some of them are 150 years old. So why I'm giving you this context? When we talk about the accessibility of education for students with disabilities, it's important to understand the infrastructure. 
of the university, infrastructure of the campus, how much even this uh, land, landscape of the university is not uh, even, but still the good opportunities for uh, equal education. So first on, you can uh, see my uh, slides. Then when you see, when you get every information, please visualize when I'm talking about campus, when I'm talking about different opportunities, accessibility, I'm talking about this campus, which you're seeing on your screens. So a little bit of information about Syracuse University. As we know, I wanted to make this our uh, today's talk a little bit more you know, semi-casual, not so much of formal, not much boring. So some here are uh, fun facts about uh, Syracuse University. Uh, the picture you see here, it's related actually more the last fact, as you see on the bottom. Uh, so in the United States, universities have different kind of rankings. You know, they are like higher education-wise and quality-wise, number of students and international students, uh, how many graduates, how many different rankings. But one of the interesting rankings is uh, party school ranking in the United States. So Syracuse University uh, in 2014 and 2019 uh, was ranked number one party school in the U.S. So as you see on um, this picture, students are enjoying it. Usually on weekends, this campus becomes really busy uh, because students after the hard study try to relax. So let me get back to the top of Syracuse has the largest snow plow in the world. So this is, I think, interesting for many of you and you can understand what where I, I am right now. Uh, we already had our first snow this year and we're expecting more. So it is a snow city. Uh, so next one is Carry Dome. We call it Carry Dome. What is a Carry Dome? Carry Dome is a big uh, sports event hosting building. It's a, in a dome shape. And this is, a, as you see, home to the Syracuse basketball, football, and lacrosse teams. And it's the largest domed stadium of any college campus. So this is one of the things we are really proud and entire city comes when there's any big events. And uh, current president of the United States, Joe Biden, is, uh, has graduated from Syracuse University uh, from the College of Law. So he's a Syracuse alum, uh, which makes us you know, proud. Uh, then. Uh, Aaron Sorkin, so maybe some of you know, maybe some of you heard, he was a screenwriter of hits like The Social Network, maybe you have watched them, and The West Wing, uh, Moneyball, and Steve Jobs. So he's a, a Syracuse University alumni too. So these are a little bit of information. So after this presentation, you know, it's something to take away interesting about this university. <clears throat> this picture is you here see I see I'm on this picture and both of these. So why I'm starting with this picture? Uh, let me give you a little bit comment. Uh, let me comment on this picture. On the right side where I'm standing was a white polo shirt and next to me is standing a professor uh, on the uh, sunglasses. So this professor works here at the university, Syracuse University. He's a professor uh, teaching and he's a poet as well. He writes uh, poems and he writes books and he's disability uh, subject professor. So his name is Steve Kusisto. Why I'm saying this, it's important for any educational institution not only provide accessibility or inclusion of students, but they should have staff, faculty who have lived through different disabling experiences. So in other words, it's important there are professors, faculty with disability in the university. Uh, it's amazing this university has a lot of professors who come with different experience of living with different disabilities. Interestingly, uh, this picture is uh, from 2014 when I was a Humphrey Fellow, came to this university. Uh, one year before this uh, picture in 2013, in Tashkent, Professor Kusisto came. He came to Tashkent uh, as a writer's program participant, uh, which was organized by the uh, U.S. Embassy in Tashkent. So that's when we met in Tashkent, and next year we met here on campus. So next picture you see, we're having a lunch uh, with other three people. 
So one of them is uh, here you see on the first one on the wheelchair is a, my Japanese friend and a college. She was a fellow at our university. She came from Japan. And this is, was, uh, I think, about four or five years ago. Currently, she's back in Japan and she works in a Google. And she is employment advisor at the Google in Japan. And it's very, uh, he, she has very good experience there and she's doing a lot of good advocacy work on employing persons with disabilities and making the job places inclusive. And other two people, one of them, as you may already notice, Professor Steve Kusisto. Uh, and then another is also professor. Uh, maybe you can see he's uh, also on a wheelchair. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, two years ago. He was a good friend. So my point is here, when you see people having, let's say, lunch or sitting or, I mean, working in the university, that means there is opportunity for them to work. There's equal treatment. I would say relatively. Maybe some of my American colleagues might argue with me, but uh, for our uh, audience, this is, I think, uh, interesting information. Uh, so let me talk about now our topic. In Syracuse University, uh, there is kind of big model. We have like accessible Syracuse. We call it accessible Syracuse. So what does accessible Syracuse mean? They provide different services at first, uh, as you see here, ASL, ASL Interpreting Services. ASL means American Sign Language. So there are a lot of professors, students who are, uh, who, who, is, who, who study here and they have hard of hearing and some of them are deaf. So that's why if they need to go to class or if they need to, uh, you know, present the assignments, and if they need some sign language interpreter, university provides them. So university has uh, called Center for Disability Resources. It's a specific department. Uh, they provide services to students, faculty, depending on the needs. So if we have a professor or student, let's say, who needs some uh, sign language interpreter, this uh, center would provide. Or if you, for example, like on the picture, you see uh, my colleague and she was my uh, classmate when she this year graduated from PhD. So, so she's a doctoral degree. She obtained her doctoral degree on sociology uh, this year. And so she is, uh, I think she uses services from the Center for Disability Services in several classes. I've been with her and uh, she has a severe disability and like in, including like a mobility impairment as you see she's on a wheelchair with lots of functions so she has uh her impairment uh you know requires assistive devices and sometimes human assistance i remember in the classes i was with her uh she was using human services there uh specifically when she was in the class a professor's lectures needed to be taken as a note so somebody was helping her uh, also when she had to speak uh, present her uh, ideas due to some impairment in her, her speech on verbal speech the assistant helped to uh, speak out for her when she she tried so as you see with her severe uh, disability condition like function, limitations in her functions she was still studying there is available services assistance and she graduated this year and uh, she started her uh, postdoc, which is the doctoral program. She started postdoc now uh, at Cornell University, uh, which is about one hour from where I am. So maybe some of you know Cornell University is very prestigious. It's one of the eight Ivy League universities. And now uh, my friend, she started working on her postdoc at Cornell University. So if you look, so PhD program, she started PhD, she did doctoral. So it's a five year program here. So she's been on campus five years. She defended her dissertation. She's been in classes. It's a very rigorous program. Uh, but in the university, due to services provided, she could uh, complete her program. So then besides the services, we have also research centers, which also support students and, uh, you know, like in, in any level, undergraduate or graduate program, uh, to engage them as a, uh, you know, intern or researchers or fellows. 
so students can engage with these research centers, as you see on the left side, like we call Bertenblatt Institute, a center for human policy, on, and the Institute of Veterans and Military Families, and Communication and Inclusion Institute, then uh, Teisho Center for Inclusive Higher Education. So these research centers close their work, uh, students, and engage them to help them academically uh, to prepare for their next uh, professional or academic journey. Uh, so as this is about Syracuse University, we have different programs, but to be more specific, I will tell you more uh, about one of these research centers. It's called Teisho Center for Inclusive Higher Education. This is more, uh, this center has been doing a lot of works and I myself, when starting my PhD in my first year, I worked in this center, so I can share my own uh, information and uh, findings and my experience. Uh, by the way, uh, just one more information. Uh, there was one more student, PhD student. He, he had uh, cerebral palsy. He, ha he had some physical impairments and speech impairments. And for him, like, you know, his mobility was pretty much uh, limited. So he defended his PhD, I think, about three years ago. And currently, he's working in uh, California. He's working at uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, fa company Facebook so he could get his job there and now uh, he's I think pretty much doing well over there uh, helping the Facebook company to make the programs more disability accessible so let me talk about Teshof Center for Inclusive Higher Education so Teshof Center this is a name uh, named after the uh, family uh, Lawrence Tayshev. So Lawrence Tayshev is uh, uh, who initiated, who started uh, supporting this center. As you can read here on your screen, uh, so he had experienced, you know, he has observed some a situation where uh, his cousin uh, was being, you know, sent to institution, where residential institution, not being part of mainstream society, but segregated uh, institution. Uh, so then he didn't like that, how, how that happened. So he decided to uh, invest in this cause. So, you know, to support more inclusive society, inclusive education for persons with different disabilities. So then uh, Lawrence Teshoff initiated, supported this establishment of Teshoff Center for Higher Inclusive Higher Education at Syracuse University. And Lawrence Teshoff has passed away. Uh, after him, also his brother also passed away. But now, currently, Robert Teshov is continuing. As of now, they invested, like I think, uh, about five million dollars to support the uh, inclusive higher education at Syracuse University. One of the programs uh, Teshov Center runs called Inclusive University, or in short, we call it Inclusive U. So, on the right side, you can see I just. You know, suddenly before my presentation today, I saw this announcement it was posted in one of our uh, uh, hallways here. It's attention for Syracuse University students. So this is an announcement and basically they're looking for a residential mentor. So what does that mean? Uh, inclusive U program enrolls students with different disabilities. Uh, with like intellectual disabilities, with different learning disabilities, physical disabilities, to become the student of this Syracuse University. Uh, Inclusive U is not only helps with academic achievement, but also social support. Like students can become part of the entire university campus. They can be part of the uh, all the events, what's happening on the university. So, and students in the, in the United States, most of them stay in the dormitory. So in the dorm, they come, they stay, and they are not necessarily staying their family. But for students with disabilities, it's not always easy for them to stay uh, alone in the uh, dormitory to meet their needs. So they sometimes need somebody who can accompany them uh, in the room, they, like some roommate. So what Inclusive You program did, they, start, they used some of their funds, and they, this, they, they made this announcement. So announcement is about recruiting students uh, to be a roommate for students with disabilities. So if somebody, let's say student, let's say, uh, without disability, I would say, uh, is recruited 
to the program as a, a residential mentor. They call it residential mentor. Basically, uh, the, the student with disability and student without disability will stay in the same room, so they become roommates. But a student without disability does not have to pay his dorm or her dormitory fee. So program pays for him, uh, inclusive you program. So through this program, inclusive you program supporting, uh, you know, students with disability can stay in the same dormitory with other students without disabilities. So this is a social inclusion, social engagement, and support like a peer-to-peer -peer relationship. Uh, this is a very unique approach, and uh, it's, so far it's been really working well. In the next uh, slide, there is some short video I will uh, let you watch. You can see how this program is running. Uh, so it's a very unique, and it's I think uh, promotes not only academic engagement, inclusion in the university, but also socialization of students with disabilities. So if, after the graduation, they can become the uh, equal participant of the society. So uh, as you see here, some information about the inclusive program uh, achieved in 2017. Uh, this was a ranked number one college for students with autism in the country. So there are many. Uh, programs for students with disabilities in the United States, but uh, the station center run program was ranked number one. And uh, so it's, as you see, like one of the uh, 20 college with great inclusion programs for students with disabilities, which is also a significant, uh, I think, uh, achievement because in the uni United States, many universities and being one of 20 is uh, quite an impressive achievement. Uh, so, you see here a little bit of numbers. Uh, I hope I can uh, play the screen uh, with a YouTube video I have on link. Uh, so, inclusive you students currently 84. And there are uh, pro, like 120 available programs. So, when we say 120 available programs, uh, they can take courses. They can involve in different classes uh, with other students. And then there's internship departments. So students who are part of Inclusive U, inclusive U uh, they can be engaged as an intern do some practical works. So I, okay, here. Okay, here. If you share the link in the comments okay. so we can play the video. So, Mr. Jahan, you can share the link with us and we will play it. Okay. Okay. Do you mind I stop sharing for a second? You don't have to stop sharing, but you. Uh, and we have a few comments from our audience. So, so did you have a chance have to a receive, chance my, to receive uh, my, uh, presentation my presentation I sent you via Telegram? Telegram? Yes, let's do this. I will um, fix the video and you may answer yeah, the questions yeah. we have on the screen. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm sorry I will for fix the technical, it. technical dilemma, here. Sure. dilemma here. Sure. So first question from Sardorbek Mavlonov. I'm a disabled person, so I want to study foreign university for students with disabilities, which can give me opportunity to change my life. Can you show me any university which is to apply? Thank you, Sardar, for your question. Thank you very much, Thank you very much Sardar, Sardar, for your question. For your question. Uh, uh, definitely. definitely. At first, there are many universities, many colleges in the United States, and they have different uh, programs, different uh, services, and uh, different types of uh, assistance programs, like AIDS. Uh, depending on your interest, uh, and also maybe some universities, uh, I would say, may offer programs for particular types of disabilities. For instance, some uh, some college, for example, there is a, a university in Washington, D.C. They are very strong. Uh, it's called Gallaudet University. They are very strong in supporting the uh, deaf students. So my point is here, depending on the disability as well, some colleges may be stronger than others. I mean, some universities might be stronger than others. So I can definitely, uh, there is a link. I will give you a link. 
you, there's a list of universities. I think there are more than uh, 50. Uh, you can look and uh, definitely check any of them you like. And if you are interested to apply, then uh, I'm available uh, after you know this session, maybe later, uh, you can reach out and I can help you uh, with more specific questions. Thank you. Unfortunately, I cannot see the link, the video. Uh, so uh, on, so the last, on the last, almost on the almost last slide, last this, slide uh, you this, see? Uh, you uh, see? Uh, yeah, uh, I see some pictures. You see this? See this? So that picture so that is picture uh, actually, you, actually you can, coming from coming YouTube. From YouTube. I think it, 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 it's not uh, clickable, so it's not the link, it's just the picture. No, uh, no, uh, if you have a separate link, we would be happy uh, okay. to upload it. We have another question, Yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I want to remind everyone, while we're live, please uh, be active and ask your questions in the comments, and our presenter will answer them following the presentation. Okay, I got the video. Okay, if you, the video. If okay I can if start okay, it. I can start it. Yes, sure. Is it on screen? It on Not screen? yet, right? Not yet, right? It is on the screen. Yes, it's on the screen. It is on the screen. I can it's play it. Okay. I can play it. Okay. Oh, by the way, is, oh, is it so audition? Uh, can you listen? So, uh, audi uh, there, we don't hear it. So, if you share the link with me, I will. I will, will... Okay. Okay. Yeah. I will send you the link. Send you the link. We have another question, if you don't mind answering it as well. Uh, oh, yeah, from yeah, Dinoza yeah. Alimardanova. What is your best number one tip for any prospective U.S. student? Uh, are we talking about the student with disability or any? Um, I think as we're covering uh, this topic, I would say yes. Okay. okay. Well... Well, English language, English language. It's, a it's a must. Without that, Without it's, that hard it's hard to, uh, uh, you know, you I mean, know, do anything do basically, do anything not basically, only academically, not but, academically just but just survive. Mm -hmm. so, English so English language is must. Language then is next must. one is, uh, if the, you know, uh, this is a, in the U.S. universities are so good that there is no right or wrong question. Like you just ask, just be open. That's, I would say, be communicable and go ahead with any questions. Thank you. Can you tell us about after school activities uh, or extracurricular? for students with disabilities? What kind of activities yeah. are available? Yeah. So, so uh, there are many. There uh, are many. So some uh, of them, so I, can, of them like, I can count, like how, students, how with students with disabilities do after do uh, their, after school, uh, right? After, after, school, right? after, after you know, the, their, you know, their yes. uh, uh, classes are, class are done. So what they, mm -hmm. do, what is, they do is, there's always there's social always events. Social events. Organized by the organized different by university programs, like, like program. student unions. Student we have a lot of student unions, of student, unions student associations. associations. Student associations, association. uh, like, uh, at least like at least once a week, once a organize, week organize different, different uh, public, uh, events, public events, engaging students, engaging students with, different with different backgrounds different and, different and different topics. Look, another thing another is thing we have every Friday, every Friday, I mean, every Saturday, Saturday uh, two sessions uh, two of two movie sessions nights. Of movie night. Students go students and get go together and with get others. There's always popcorn, there's always popcorn uh, uh, like movie nights, nights, and they stay watch together with their friends. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so the video is ready. One second. Every student deserves the opportunity to have the college experience 
to help them achieve their dreams. Inclusive View is an opportunity for students with intellectual disability to have a full college experience. So students earn a meaningful certificate from Syracuse University. Students declare a major, they participate in fully inclusive coursework, they can participate in college internships in real business opportunities, students can participate in clubs and organizations, students can live in residence halls, our students have lots of peer opportunities and participate in attending athletic events. My favorite things about SU was like just I mean, everything was my favorite. Being able to be with my friends, doing like all these opportunities that I didn't think I was going to do. I love SU because it's fun, especially my favorite mascot, Otto. Otto. Tyler Dyer, good day for you, 2020. Go cute. let's go, our house. I think the first time I met Harry was when he came in for orientation. He was a student who just getting from one room to another could easily get lost or confused. Harry became this student over four years who lived independently in the dorms. He became this student who could navigate campus on his own. When he walks across campus, he knows everyone. He is just a star. This little kid, we love Basketball a lot. Harry started working with the men's basketball team as one of the student managers. Harry has always had this love of sports and athletics and it fit right in with his career goals and also with his major. It was something that was really just a, a dream come true for him. Basketball manager. You come on out Saturday, just, my boys are awesome. And then his senior year, Harry participated in our senior internships. We know that for many of our students, getting a job after graduation is a really important goal for them. And it's an important goal for most college students. The internship year is something that we think is a really important part of our Inclusive View programming, that we help support students in choosing something that is tied to their career interests and is related to their major. All of these pieces really tie together for a student like Harry because he took courses in his major area of study, and so his major was exercise science. He worked with the men's basketball team throughout his college career, and he also did his internships in both the Barnes Center and the Manley Fieldhouse. So those internships really tied into what his career goals are. Often our students go to classes with a peer mentor, that can help them with their schoolwork, who can help them organize their materials, help them participate in class, help them participate in group work, help them with their homework. Students can bring a mentor or students can work with us to hire an SU student to be a peer mentor. We set up from the very beginning a peer-to-peer -peer program. It's really expanded the social opportunities for students and really given them that extra first step in how to get involved. We're really proud of our program and how much it's grown in the last few years. Three years ago we had our first student who lived in the residence hall and that was Megan. When I started as a freshman at Inclusive View, I was very shy and I didn't really know anybody. I was the first person to live in the dorms. We work with the Inclusive View students to figure out what kinds of supports they might need. Residential mentors are SU students who live in the residence halls and get matched up with our students based on their needs. It was just really hard for me because like I, didn't, I guess I'm, I wasn't used to like living away from home but then I got really used to it after a while and I stayed in the dorm and I met a lot of nice people and everything who like let me like be who I am. Harry lived downstairs too so we all hung out together all the time. To see her graduating from Syracuse University and about to move into her own apartment I'm just really proud. Cleo was our first Remembrance Scholar from Inclusive View. The Remembrance Scholarship is, is the highest honor at Syracuse University. 
and to have a Remembrance Scholar as an Inclusive Youth student is something that we actually didn't know could ever happen. I'm really proud to be part of Syracuse University because of their inclusive stance. It makes me feel good because they know I've been supporting this college community here at Syracuse University because they know I've been attending every event. My student organization, campus involvement I was part of was Relay for Life. I was a recruitment chair. My sophomore year, I joined Sport Management Club, a student association I'm also part of. I liked it so I could like show my leadership. No dream is too big just because somebody told you that you couldn't do these things or just because you were nervous or scared doesn't mean that you can't go out and do these big things in your life because these three prove that it's possible and you can do it too. This is a college campus where students with disabilities are really part of the full college experience. I'll say I change because I'm, I'm a grow up person. You can do anything that you want to do. I love figure. It is my life. Uh, yeah, thank you very uh, much, yeah, you very uh, much Dania. Uh, Dania. So, uh, so I, 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 I thought I, I, I some, some video could video be more informative than informative just talking. Than just talking. Uh, I hope uh, our, I hope our, our audience, audience could see and uh, understand what I meant what from, I my meant from my slides. Yeah, Inclusive View is an amazing program, program which I started working on when I uh, uh, started my PhD. my PhD. So yeah, I, I'm open yeah, for I'm any more questions. Yeah, we have we have another question, Sardor Bek. Mavlonov is asking, I should say I am a third year student in Uzbekistan current time. Is it possible to transfer? It would be great because my field of study is philology and teaching languages English. So mm -hmm. if you know anything about uh, <coughs> so, transferring. So yeah, here's uh, yeah, one thing, uh, Sardor, this is a very kind of very kind of valid, question. valid question. One thing one is thing about transfer. About transfer. Transfers, Transfers. Uh, if you transfer, uh, if you transfer, transfer that means, that means University here, let's say American let's University, say university, university needs, needs to see your, your transcripts. transcripts. Uh, but, uh, but the university, I don't know which university know you are university studying, there, studying there, but, but in America, America there's a credit system. credit system. So education, so based, education on based on credit system, system which, is which is not common in common Uzbek in universities. universities. So that might so be that something might you need to something figure, figure out, out. But, but in, in short, short, it's not it's not, it's not impossible. impossible. It is possible. It's possible. just need to figure out, out uh, uh, you know, if you want to transfer, transfer or which ones, which ones and which ones they accept they here. here. Uh, uh, honestly, it may not be easy, but, easy, but we, we can figure out. We can find out. We can check. If you want to talk with me after this, I'm ready to follow up with you on that. Thank you. Uh, another comment from Sivara Nurboeva. You are welcome to apply for any university since they provide inclusive education for anyone who needs it regardless of your age, sex, race, and etc. I think that's a great point. Thank you, Yes, uh, so you can, so you uh, can apply, apply, that's for that's sure, yeah. Sure, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so then one would say, like, as an international, like student, international student, there might student, be there more requirement, requirement, like, for instance, like, like TOEFL, like, IELTS exams, this is different than, different than let's say, uh, uh, US based students. US -based but in general, in general yes, uh, yes uh, you can apply, you should apply, apply consider. Look at, look at, look at, I came from I Uzbekistan, came from so, Uzbekistan, so yeah, I mean, there are yeah, hundreds, of, hundreds students of students came from Uzbekistan, came from so, Uzbekistan, so, it's so it's possible. So, following up uh, what you said about the international um, tests, uh, like TOEFL, SATs, are they required? for students with disabilities are, are the same requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here's so how, it how it works. In the university, the university there is no, there is no uh, program uh, separate program for separate disabled and non-disabled. Non it's, like it's not like that. So admission also the same. Also same. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, only but only thing, what they, they, do, they, do, they do, they give you, give you uh, uh, like, like accommodation. accommodation. Like if you need some you more need time, some people need more time to complete mm -hmm. some tests because of the because physical, physical impairment. impairment. Some, people some people may need more time need more because time of your because their of learning abilities or so some simplified language. language. So that's so maybe that's they, maybe can, provide they can provide here. Uh, but, uh, but 
in terms of TOEFL or other international like English language testing exams, that doesn't, it's not owned by university, you know, it's owned by ETS, ETS is a different institution, it's outside of any private university, so it's something ETS uh, need to consider, but honestly, I'm not sure, maybe they may have some uh, reasonable accommodation for uh, students or uh, applicants with disabilities or test takers with disabilities. Okay. Um, last question. Are uh, additional documents required for admission to universities, like health um, documents? Mm. <clears throat> so, so, here, so how, here it how it works. In the U.S., in the US uh, uh, students, students receive, receive support. support. Students, students with disabilities, students receive, with disabilities receive, receive support through support different government programs. Government programs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, but government so, but programs, government there's, basically there's basically like three laws. Three laws. Uh, one, of uh, one of them is very specific one related to education. Uh, it's like uh, law on, uh, law on you know, education, uh, of, uh, education of students, uh, with students with disabilities. That, that law has, has guidelines that if somebody if wants somebody to qualify the government qualify assistance, the government assistance, assistance mm -hmm. then they should go they through they a should particular through assessment, assessment to show what are their limitations, like functional or health impairments. I mean, it's not to separate, or it's not to discriminate them. It's only to know what kind of support they need, what kind of assistance need to be provided. So this is how it works if somebody applying from from the United States. But if you are applying from outside, uh, you don't have to show any kind of documents that you have. You don't have to prove you are healthy. You know, healthy. I mean. Uh, it's all, I mean, they don't look at you as if you're disabled, undisabled, it doesn't matter. That's, that's a good point. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, and it's... Oh, it, there is one question. One second. Let me... Uh, put it, okay. F from Firuza Mamirova. Are there any programs, opportunities for study at university for disabled people which need almost 80, 90 physical help in everyday life? I Thank you so much a, for your question. Uh, yeah, it's a very, yeah, it's I'm very pleased to see your question here. Uh, thank you for coming to this meeting. Uh, 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 so, yes. Uh, so, yes. Uh, uh, at first, at first when you say like 80%, 90% physical uh, health, so of course it depends, you know, it's a very relative understanding, but I, I understand what you mean. You're talking about somebody may need like, you know, consistent uh, and constantly some support or some like daily living or education. Was, yes, university uh, provides all those assistance, all aids if you need physical help. For example, I have a friend, she's from Ukraine, she's doing PhD and she, uh, her legs are paralyzed and she's on a wheelchair and she received from, when she arrived from Ukraine, she was given all the assistance from the university, like she needed a wheelchair, specific wheelchair, uh, because you know, that could fit her size when she's inside the room, when she's outside. So. The different wheelchairs are provided depending on how you need to use, like indoor, outdoor wheelchairs, or if you need different assistance, they provide you different assistance. So, in short, yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, one more question from Sardor Beck. What should we do to win the scholarship? I mean, do we need to have IELTS or should we write any essay? You so, uh, uh, yeah, when it comes to application, comes to, application to, let's say, to, let's say, uh, university, university here, here as, I said, as I said, it's the same requirement, requirement as in, for, international for international students. students. First, you need to you show, you need to show proof, proof that your that English, English is sufficient, sufficient level, level to study here. To study here. So, so, there are two tests, there are IELTS, tests or IELTS or TOEFL, are the types of tests that, tests that can, can be, accepted be accepted by university. By university. So, in the beginning, so like, there was a question, right? Somebody asked, what would be one thing to pay attention? I said, English. So, this, so this, if you are, regardless of regardless disabled, non-disabled, non -disabled, uh, you, should you should be able to able study here study in English, English language, language, but university but needs university to see evidence of that through this test. Thank you. And I think that was the last question, as I don't see any other. Uh, which means we may wrap up the session. And I want to thank you, Bridja um, Hon, for joining us today and giving this remarkable presentation. And I hope 
uh, our friends who watched us they benefited a lot from this session and as you mentioned they some of them may reach you uh, after mm -hmm. the session and yeah, thank you please, so much uh, everyone for free, joining us today to share my yeah, contacts share my and, contact I'll and I'll be happy thank you very much thank for inviting much here, for uh, here uh, yes thank you all for joining us uh, today for your questions and comments and see you at our next alumni talks bye